My name is Mark Brittany. I'm the, the CEO of Globe in Africa. I am responsible for servicing the 23 countries in Africa. Today we're in, in Arusha, Tanzania. Very exciting times. It's the start of the fourth annual Kilimanjaro Learning Expedition. Uh, with the Kilimanjaro Learning Expedition, we have created an opportunity to engage uh, future scientists, tomorrow scientists of the world. At the same time, we've managed to create a project that has engaged the whole world. And historically, we've had up to 18,000, 19,000 class groups following the expedition online from about 97 uh, countries. It turned out so successful that uh, here we are back with our fourth uh, Kilimanjaro learning expedition. This is really exciting. Our seven day journey is done and we're up at the highest height. It's awesome. I'm so happy, man. I made it to the peak. So excited. Jumbo, hello from Expedition Base Camp in Arusha, Tanzania, right on the foothills of Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest mountain in all of Africa. This is Mike O'Toole, the expedition leader and a proud GLOBE teacher. We just got down off the mountain a couple hours ago and our team of students and teachers and scientists are so excited to share this amazing journey with all of you. So what makes Kilimanjaro so unique, it's as if you're walking from the equator to the North Pole in just a couple of days. That is what makes it so special. We're excited to share this tale today and have you join us on this virtual climb. Hi, uh, my name is Isaac Deaton and I'm from Valdez, Alaska and go to Valdez High School. I'm here to talk about the uh, rainforest biome. And the rainforest biome starts out at 1,830 meters and goes to about 2,804. The temperature was probably around 21 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius and it was very, very humid, pretty hot. I was sweating pretty good. Some of the vegetation was really impressive. There was a lot of sycamore figs and palms, a lot of moss hanging off of them and some vines. That was really cool. I want a handlebar mask. How's it look? Oh, that's kind of itchy. Then, <laughs> that's a keeper. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Estes Park. What kind of wildlife did you see in, in up there? Hi, this is Maddie speaking. I'm from Colorado too, so it's nice to see some participation from the home state. We saw a lot of wildlife, a lot, a lot, a lot of wildlife. We began on safari. There we were able to see, oh my goodness, everything. It felt like we saw lions, we saw rhinos, we saw hippos, lots of elephants. And then we got to the base of Kili, which is rainforest. And there I recall many monkeys and birds. And the funny thing is we heard far more wildlife than we saw. So you're walking through the rainforest and it's almost like the animals are playing a game with you. It's like they're playing hide and seek. Anyways, the further we got up the mountain, um, the less variety we saw because the temperatures were more extreme and it was more difficult for wildlife to survive. So there uh, we're getting different birds, more birds and um, some bugs. And that was about it. And our next speaker is Miss Leanne. Hi everyone, I am Leanne Hodge from Dallas, Texas, and I was, am going to talk about the summit, which is the ice zone. Downboard. Right there. <laughs> um, the summit zone is at 5,000 meters up to almost 6,000 meters. So we are very high at this point. At night, the temperature gets way below freezing. We were all in our down coats and hats and ready to be really cold at night. But during the day when the sun comes out, it's very hot and you have to make sure you have sunscreen on because there's not a lot of 
um, atmosphere to cover all the UV rays. Um, there's also very little to no vegetation at this point because the oxygen level is so low. So we were all very tired the next morning, but then getting up to the summit, it was very rewarding. Thank you, Thank you so much. Congratulations. Woo! Congratulations. We're at the top, really the roof of Africa. Woo! Uh, my favorite part of the trip was probably at the summit. The moment you got up there, it was just this instant feeling of satisfaction that, you know, I did this. I just climbed this 19,000 foot tall mountain. Hi, everyone around the world. This is Dana Clark. I'm a middle school science teacher from Dallas, Texas. And I just want to give a shout out to all the girls at Irma Lerma Rangel Young Women's Leadership School, my school. This expedition is an international affair that people from around the world have come together to do science on Mount Kilimanjaro. Science is everywhere. Science is action. Every day you can do science. You can go onto our website and you can enter your data on the GLOBE database for the climate in your area, at your school, in your neighborhood. Also when you go on, you can see how this is an international event. You can see schools from all around the world posting their data and start asking questions. Science starts with asking questions. What is the uh, pH level of the water and is it toxic? Hi, this is Jenny Heckethorn. Um, we tested the pH of the water as we climbed the mountain and it started out at about 4.5 on the pH scale, so relatively uh, acidic. And then it did increase as we got higher up on the mountain to where it was eventually 6.5. So still slightly acidic, but but getting into more of a neutral range. Go ahead, we got time for another few questions. I'm Kiara, what was the humidity when it was so dry you got no sleep? Hello, I'm Logan for the humidity. We had humidity that was pretty low some days when we were around Shira Camp and Moorhut. The humidity was 18%. But the days we were in the clouds, the humidity was about 100%. Thank you for asking. Uh, we discovered that learners coming back from Kilimanjaro, you know, they, they have a, a, a fuller life view. They see the environment in a different light. It's everybody's ambition to summit uh, Africa's highest point. And uh, after having accomplished that, to, tomorrow scientists realize that uh, the sky is not really the limit. Yeah, today we just got some Really cool. <laughs> I'm just excited. I still don't believe it, you know, that feeling you have when you really will for something and you get it. So that's just it. Happy. And as for the teachers, uh, the teachers have the need to expose the children to higher thinking and better resources. And they also realize that, that the, the teaching doesn't just happen in the classroom, but the world is out there and the world can be achieved. <laughs>